Hi there, it's Melanie with Lost and Found and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is another video that I'm doing by viewer request. I've had some folks ask for help with staging shelves in your antique booth. So some of you just rent maybe one shelf space or you have a set of shelving in your antique booth and you're wanting some help with how to put together a compelling display. So we're gonna talk about that today in this video. All right, before we dive in to the tips that I'm gonna share with you today, I wanna to talk for just a second about why it's important to create a compelling display in your antique booth. Anyway, why don't you just go throw the stuff that you have on a shelf and wait for the people who want it to find it, right? Okay, here's why. Over the past 10-ish years, the antique mall industry has been going through this change and it's going from uh, having a customer base of people that are just shopping for collectibles and true valued antiques to people that are also coming that really aren't interested in collectibles or true valued antiques. They're coming to shop for fun home decor. So the malls and the vendors that I see that are doing the best are the ones that have navigated through this change. Now, they're not necessarily selling different stuff. They're still selling the same stuff, but they're marketing it and displaying it in a different way. And I think that it's been great for the antique mall industry. It's been great for my own business. And I think it's been great for a lot of you guys, okay? Because you know what? The home decor customer base is so much bigger than people that are just shopping for collectibles, right? So why not expose this huge customer base that maybe have never shopped at a flea market or antique mall, bring them in. So think about it like this. Maybe, you know, you sell um, old Kodak cameras and there is a segment of the population that collects old Kodak cameras, but there's this much bigger segment of the population that knows nothing about old Kodak cameras, but they saw a picture on Pinterest where somebody had one on a bookshelf in their living room and it looked super cool. So they're gonna come into the antique mall and buy the old Kodak camera, not because they're collecting them or they really know anything about them, because they want it to look cool. And you know what? A sale is a sale. Why does it matter? Does it matter if they're buying it because they're collecting or they're buying it to display? A sale is a sale. So let's welcome that customer base. Let's invite them into our spaces. And part of how you're doing that is by upping your display game, creating a really compelling display. Because again, this new customer base isn't coming in necessarily knowing what they're looking for. They're not on the hunt for one specific thing. So they're going to look through your shelf to find the one thing that they want. They're on the hunt for just cool stuff that they can use to decorate their house on a budget in a unique way. So you have to take the items that you have and show them with what you have to sell, how they can do that. You have to help them see how they can use this cool stuff that you have in their home as ways that they can create these decorative vignettes, okay? So the better your display is, the better your sales are going to be. Because you know what? You'll hit both customer bases. Okay, let's go back to that camera. The camera collectors are still gonna find your camera, but so are the home decor people, right? The collectible, the collectors are still gonna find the cool stuff in your booth, but you're also gonna reach a new customer base. So, all right, I have five things that I wanna share with you today about just tips for your shelves, how you can create better shelf displays that are going to reach this home decor market and that I really think will help boost your sales, okay? I'm just gonna rapid fire through them right now. Then we're gonna talk a little bit more about them in general. And then we're gonna wrap up this video with a whole bunch of pictures where I'm going to be able to show you exactly what I'm talking about, okay? All right, so number one is you want to create a focal point and then layer from that focal point. Number two, you wanna unite your shelves with some sort of theme. 
Number three, you want to make sure that you merchandise and not just stage your items. Number four, you're going to add what I call fluff for visual interest. We'll talk more about what that is. And then number five, while you're doing all of this, you have to make sure that you're keeping it shoppable. Okay, so creating a focal point, you want to have some place that is going to draw the eye. So you want to take the biggest thing that you have and you want to use it to create a focal point. Now, you don't have to put it right in the center. You can put it over to this side or you can point it over to this side, but you're kind of putting it here and then you're going to create line, a visual line um, and kind of a triangle shape down from that focal point. So if your focal point's in the middle, then that triangle is going to go right down like this. If it's over here on the side, you're going to have a kind of this angle triangle over here, this angle triangle. Play around where the focal point is. It doesn't always have to go exactly in the middle, but you need to have something that's going to draw the eye in to your shelf. And then you're going to layer on items from that focal point, okay? What we want to avoid, again, is just a row of stuff sitting next to each other on a shelf. It's not how people decorate. So you want to create different height levels. You want to take something and kind of slide something partially back behind it. Um, that you're, all of this is creating kind of that home decor feel. You're adding things, lots of things for the customer to look through, to look at. You're keeping them engaged visually. Okay, number two. Don't just put a random collection of stuff on your shelf. Well, whatever I have to sell, I'm just gonna throw it up here on your shelf. You want it to all fit together. You want it to unite your items together. And there's several different ways you can do that. Don't overthink it, okay? You can do that through color or colors. You can do it through seasons, like a bunch of fall themed things or spring themed things or Christmas. You can do that um, just by content. So you have a bunch of stuff that is you know horse related well then put that all together you want to create some unity to your display and again don't ever think it lots of ways you can do that but what you're trying to avoid is just having shelves full of just random stuff none of it works together if you can keep your items unified with some sort of theme color season subject matter design style any of that it's going to promote more sales because Customers will be able to see, oh, I like this, and I can display it with this, and oh, I have something that looks like that in my home, and so this thing, I can use it with that thing that I already have. You're helping them see how they can use the stuff that you have for sale. Okay, number three, um, while you're doing this, while you're creating your visual interest point and you're layering and you're uniting your stuff with the theme, you have to avoid the temptation to just purely stage your items, okay? You want to remember that people are there to shop, not just to think your stuff is pretty, right? You can have the beautiful, most beautiful booth there, but maybe nobody's gonna shop in it. You want to make sure that you're merchandising and not just staging. Now this goes for, especially if you're mixing some wholesale in with your booth, some new things that you have multiple of. Not just your cool one-off finds, but say you've got a bunch of little, you know, um, Christmas trees, right? When it's Christmas tree time or, or, you know, a bunch of other greenery or you've got a bunch of coffee mugs or these fun box signs that have a certain saying on them. Put them together, okay? In the midst of your display, if you have multiple of something, stack them up together. Just like if you walk into Target, like they've got all of these picture frames on the shelf, right? They've got five of this kind and six of this kind and three of this kind, right? Or they've got, if you're, you know, candles, they've got a row of this scent and a row of this scent. They don't have like where you just walk around Target and like there's one candle over here and then over here there's another candle and then over here there's another candle, right? They're merchandising their items that they have a lot of the same of. And you wanna do that same thing and especially, again, items that are new items that are wholesale items that you have multiple of, it will remind the people that are in your booth space, hey, I'm here to shop, not just to look. This is beautiful and pretty, but I'm here to shop. And look, here's a whole bunch of this super cute box sign with this funny, sign, funny saying on it that I can buy. There's five of them right here, and so I can buy it. So don't just, you know, cherry pick and spread things around. If you've got a bunch of coffee mugs, signs, 
books, whatever, merchandise them, put them all together in the midst of your shelf display. Okay, number four, you want to add what I call fluff, and you wanna add that for visual interest. Fluff is items that maybe you're not selling, um, or maybe you hadn't really thought about selling, or you don't really expect people to buy. It's just stuff thrown in to, like I said, add some visual interest around um, your bigger items that you have on your shelf. The things that I use the most often for fluff are faux greenery, and old books. You can also do rolled up pieces of sheet music, um, shredded sheet music, you know, stuck down inside little teacups. Um, old photos are great fluff. It just adds interest and specifically decorative interest to your shelves. So um, maybe you are a vintage camera dealer and maybe you have a shelf that you run an antique mall that has a whole bunch of vintage cameras on it. Well, in between those vintage cameras, put a little bit of greenery and find some old photos and drop them in there, okay? Just kind of sprinkled along your line of all the cameras that you have. That's gonna create a much more interesting display and it's going to draw over not just your camera people, but your home decor people too, which again, hey, you wanna to sell to both audiences. Money in your pocket is money in your pocket. It doesn't matter who buys it, somebody who's collecting or somebody who's decorating. You wanna to appeal to both audiences. So that's why we're not just lining stuff up on a shelf. We're gonna put it on a shelf and we're gonna add these different little pops of freshness and color to create just a more compelling display. All right, number five, and this is super important, don't get so involved with numbers one through four that you forget to keep your space shoppable, all right? And this is especially important if you're way in the back and you're far away from the checkout desk or maybe your mall, you know, the, the people at the front don't help a lot, your customers have to fend for themselves. You don't wanna put such a great, cute, beautiful display with stuff so high up and so many layers stacked deep that your customers can't easily get to things. If it's too high for them to reach, if there's too much stuff stacked up together and they want this thing on the bottom that's under six different things, a lot of people are just gonna pass. They're not gonna go through the hassle of doing it. So you have to balance with creating this beautiful display with also keeping it shoppable. Make sure that everything can be easily reached. You want it to be full, but you don't want it to be over cluttered. You don't want somebody to have to get this item, they're gonna have to sift through four other items on top of it, okay? Keep your displays creative, but also simple. Because I tell you what, sometimes customers are just lazy and they're not gonna go walk all the way to the front of the store and ask for help or a ladder to climb up and get that thing on your top shelf, right? So you have to make sure once you get your display together, look through it and go, okay, can everything be easily reached? Are they gonna knock this thing down that I've precariously placed up here while they're reaching for this item, right? You wanna make sure that the average customer can get to everything that you have on your shelf while you're creating these beautiful displays. Okay, so let's take a minute and I've got a bunch of photos from this one shelving area that I had in my brick and mortar studio that I had for two years. and. It's just gonna show you lots of different ways. Like these are the same three shelves and I did them totally different over and over again. And you're gonna be able to see some of these principles as we're looking at these shelves. Now, there is a little bit of a, bit of a difference in that this was my own store. I was there all the time. It was a small store, it was just me. And so um, I took a little bit more risk with my display than you may want to because I knew that I was pretty much always with the customers that were in my store. And if they wanted something, I was standing right there and I could get it down from them. So um, some of the things that you see may not work for you as far as keeping your space shoppable. They worked for me in this space, but um, I hope that it's gonna give you some ideas for just how you can put these principles in practice. So let's take a look. All right, so let's, Take a look at some pictures of some shelves. Um, this was a shelf section that I had in my brick and mortar studio and same section of shelves. And we're gonna see lots of different ways that we put them together. 
Now this is actually the very first display that I had on the shelves and um, you know it could be a little bit more full but you can already see some of the principles in play that we talked about. So first up here this is our focal point this big frame and you can see we kind of go triangular down from there and instead of leaving the frame empty we propped this little weather vane piece up in it just to fill in some of that negative space. So the theme of this or what's kind of uniting it all together is this we've got metallics with the silver plate here the silver plate here we've got the pumpkins kind of spread throughout here here and down here and then we've got black and white so we've got black and white here black and white on the coffee mugs black and white here black and white on the pumpkins so we've got colors themes kind of uniting all of this here's our fluff we put some greenery in right here we put a little greenery in right here and then we're also paying attention to the merchandising. So we've got several coffee mugs right here. We've got a pair of signs right here, a pair of signs right here, okay? Remember to merchandise your items, not just stage them. I could have taken these little signs and just stuck them all around the store, but by putting them together right here, it reminds people that they're in a store and that they're here to buy. And not only can they buy this one sign, but maybe they can buy that one for their friend too. All right, let's keep going. Okay, here's another example. Same set of shelves, totally different look. Once again, here's our focal point right up here. This time it's right smack dab in the middle. And we're uniting this display again through the same kind of colors and textures. So you'll see a lot of warm wood. So we've got the warm wood of the clock, the frames right here. We've got this warm wood this wood, the warm wood of this frame, and then this super cool wine box down here. All of that is this repeated wood. I've also got some brown glass right here that is kind of that same warm color. I do have a couple pieces of white glass. Had I only had one of these, I probably wouldn't have put it up there, but because I had three, it worked to kind of fill them in the shelves. Once again, we're merchandising. We put multiple of our little um, pieces of greenery here so people can buy not just one, but both. We've got two signs, a stack of signs here together. Um, and then we're adding fluff. Instead of just the teacups right here, I put some greenery in the teacups just to provide some freshness. And it gives people an idea of how to display. And I'll tell you what, people bought not just the teacups, but also the little greenery that went inside. All right, same set of shelves, another look. So same idea here, our focal point, definitely still here up the top. This time it was a little bit to the left. And we've got a theme of kind of landscapes. Um, we've got this landscape art right here, this landscape art, and then we've got metallics that are repeating. So this gold tin, the brass, and all this brass, and the gold frame, all right, and a little bit of metallic -y down here okay now look at this merchandising one two three four four of these plants all right here together so people can know there's a bunch of these plants here for sale they're all right here together you can grab one from the shelf this box is also full of plants right here rather than just spreading them out throughout the store I put a whole bunch of them right here together items that you have multiple of and then we added in just holes in the display, again, with these books. We put a stack of books here. I put some books up here, a little bit of greenery, just filling in these holes with some fluff and some color. Okay, here is a Christmas display. Same set of shelves again. Again, here's our big focal point right up here at the top. And we've got a theme with colors, reds, greens here, and metal. So we've got copper right here, brass right here, more brass, and copper, all right? Lots and lots of fluff for Christmas time, right? All sorts of little bits of greenery. You've got the little Christmas tree up here. We've got Christmas trees down here. I stuck some greenery, Christmas greenery, inside this same wooden box and stuck some book bundles inside this box too. There's no reason to have the box empty. Put some things in it, give people an idea of how they can use this box in their house. 
another Christmas tree, a little bit more greenery, okay? So we've filled in this area, we've got layers. So you can see these breadboards are kind of behind the, the book stack and the copper. Uh, we've got this silver plate that's back here. We've got layers coming out from the wall and everything was shoppable. Everything could easily be grabbed. And again, I was there to help people if they needed anything off this shelf. So remember that you wanna keep it shoppable. All right, this one's totally different. Look at how it looks like a completely different space. So this was springtime. So these shelves were united by spring colors and lots of green and pink and yellow. So big focal point up here with this barn quilt and then we pulled from these colors. So we've got the pink and the yellow and green and you'll see it everywhere. Here's pink, pink, pink. It draws your, your eye all the way up and down. There's even pink right here. Here's yellow, yellow, we've got yellow down here, and then lots of green, green on the books, green greenery, green painting, green down here, green on these planters, and then lots of just faux greenery that got dropped in. Every little place where I could stick some faux greenery, I put some in there. Green books right here too, okay? And then merchandising, here are some, these were some of our spring scented candles. So I put several of them here together. I had another candle display where all the candles were, but I took a selection of them and I put them over here. But again, I kind of kept them in groups so that people could get an idea of like, here's multiple of this line that we carry. And oh yeah, I forgot, look at these little birds. Everything about this just says spring and color. And so the whole display works together. More birds down here. I forgot about that. I had a lot of birds, all the little birds all through. Okay, another one, red. This is red barn quilt was the focal point. So we brought red all the way down from the red books to the red tin to more red books to red down here, red here, red inside here, red over here in the cards, okay? We bounced the same color all the way up and down the shelves. And we also have black, black here, black here, now you may realize this little picture here has been on several shelf displays, okay? I just kept moving it around. I'd take it off the shelves, put it someplace else when it didn't fit in the display, when it was time to make a new display and I had black and red, I pulled it back in, okay? You can do that. Move the things around that are on your shelves. With our merchandising, look, we have one, two, three of the same wire wrapped jars here all together and then a little bit of fluff by sticking some greenery in one of them. All right, more merchandising. We have one, two, three of these brick molds. We kept them together. I had a lot of them and so there are more throughout the store but I purposely put three together over here and filled them with books and bingo cards because I wanted people to know, hey, we have a lot of these. Or actually there's four, there's another one. You can buy lots of these. And then layers, look, there's no empty spaces. Behind these smaller things on the bottom, I put other things that would stand up to fill in that hole. Even our little mug over here, I found something to drop inside of it that had a little bit of a wood tone um, and that provided some texture and just some visual interest. And um, it helped kind of stage just the mug and the little brush. Even the basket, we put something inside of it to give it some added interest and so it wasn't just an empty basket and it had a little bit of color in it. All right, this is the last one. And this, I hope you can tell, it has a horse theme. Same thing, we've got our focal point. Again, this time it's over to the side a little bit. And then we've got big horse, a horse brush, another horse, okay? So this is kind of all horse stuff. I put it all together. Um, same idea with the merchandising. Look, we've got all of these plants together, them all together down here, and then all of these together. So if someone wanted greenery, they had a whole bunch to pick from right here. And then we filled it in with books. All of these books, all of these books. And then we kind of added our other little treasures, this cute little box, this jug, this tin, this other tin, this great crate. If you've got a crate or a box or something, fill it with something, okay? Give your display some interest to look at. But we've got layers, these things that are back against the wall, we've got the things in front of it, our focal point, everything is easily shoppable, 
so much to look at. Our items are merchandised and displayed. We've got lots of filler to give it visual interest, to make it pleasing. Lots of things that our customers can dig and look through as they come up to these shelves. All right, there we go. I hope that this video has given you some creative ideas, some ways that you can up your display game, because again, you want to take money from those home decor shoppers. They are out looking for cool stuff. They're looking for creative ideas. Think for them, put together your creative displays, showcase your items. Don't just line them up on a shelf and be boring. Create really compelling displays on your shelves and start seeing more sales from this home decor customers. If you found this video helpful, I would love for you to give us a thumbs up, leave us a note in the comment section, and of course, to subscribe. We've got an entire playlist of tips for antique booth owners, and we've got more videos coming, because I really do wanna help you succeed in this business that I 100% believe is something that you can do and you can make some real money at. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Thank you.